All right, this is going to be fun. So I'm about to share a video with you. Um, Richard Dawkins is talking with um, Neil deGrasse Tyson. And um, what I can't stand that you're going to see here is um, disingenuity, dishonesty, willful ignorance, or perhaps unwillful ignorance. So they are talking about, you know, the evolution story and natural selection. So let me show you what they say and then we'll come back to it. Beginning of his book, uh, Darwin's Dangerous Idea, and his point was that uh, before Darwin came along, it seemed obvious to everyone that big complicated things like humans and oak trees and things had to have a, an, an explanation in terms of design. And it was a huge stroke of insight for Darwin to see that it didn't, that the laws of physics alone could produce this prodigious amount of complexity filtered through this odd process of natural selection. To me, it's always been strange that it took so long, that it took until the middle of the 19th century for Darwin and Wallace, and even maybe one or two other people. This is thousands of years of thought. Of, yes, and, and brilliant but, people have come before. Aristotle could have could have had it and didn't. I mean, when you think how much cleverer you had to be to do what Newton did, uh, or, or Leibniz, um, inventing calculus, um, working out about the laws of how 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 gravity. I'm the Newton finger puppet here. <laughs> okay, yeah. um, you'd think that somebody would have t tumbled to evolution by natural selection before the middle of the 19th century, yet they didn't. And so that's an astonishing thing, and it needs an explanation. Did Daniel Dennett explain why it took that long? Or, and if he didn't, what would be your explanation? I don't remember whether he did. All right, so let's cut it over here. My problem with this is that there are a handful of people who came up with this theory decades before Darwin. The only one thing that we know that the world knows that Darwin introduced to the theory of natural selection being involved in species development is the, uh, the racist aspect to it, you know, where he said the black race originated from one human species and was separate and originated separately from the white race. That's the only thing that he added to the theory the racist aspect, which has been disproved with the recent single origin hypothesis, which finds out that all mankind come from the same single mitochondrial Eve and mitochondrial Adam, and, um, genetic Adam from the same ancestor. That's all that um, Darwin added to it. But how did these two great minds not know so I'll give you one of the perhaps most important minds who came up with this, who Darwin is actually accused of plagiarizing by his colleagues. They accused Darwin of plagiarizing this guy, and that's Al Jahiz. So Al Jahiz, this is an article on News Rescue. Al Jahiz, 19th century black Muslim. He's actually black African. Was true father of modern biological evolution concept. And Al Jahiz, an Arab polymath, lived in Basra, um, that's in Iraq. He wrote literature including zoology, poetry, poetry, lexicography, and he wrote Kitab al Hayawan, the book of animals. And what does he discuss in this book? He discusses uh, evolution, mechanisms of evolution, but from an intelligent designer or a God perspective. And this is the root of the theories that Darwin now, you know, worked upon. And he, he discussed subjects like the struggle for existence, ring a bell, okay, struggle for survival, the struggle for existence, transformation of species into each other, and uh, natural selection, the environmental factors that lead to this. Different things that he did was observe animal adaptation, food chains, competition and survival, inter-species relationships. Al Jahiz is known for his contributions that, let me show you right here, I quote from Shanavas's book. Though a great majority of people, regardless of their religion, consider Darwin as the originator of the idea of evolution, Shanavas reminds us that 
Darwin, who lived in the um, in the nineteenth um, early nineteenth century, from eighteen o nine to eighteen eighty two, and his grandfather Erasmus Darwin were influenced by the work of Muslim scientists who lived centuries before them. For instance, Dr. Shanavas quotes from John William Draper, 1812 to 1883, the first president of American Chemical Society, a contemporary of Darwin, and a former president of New York University summarized the, del the deliberately in induced academic amnesia in the West. Draper acknowledges the fact that Muslims described the theory of evolution in their schools centuries before the West did. I quote, he quotes, I have to deplore the systematic manner in which the literature of Europe has contrived to put out of sight our scientific obligations to the Mohammedans, as the Muslims were called then. Because if you know, during the Dark Ages, we had the Golden Ages in the Muslim world. That's when the Timbuktu University in Mali, which was the first university in the world, first tertiary college institution, and then the whole of the, the Middle East was the center for knowledge that preserved the knowledge during the Dark Ages. And then these people used to go there to study. So he says, surely they cannot be much longer hidden. Injustice founded on religious rancor and national conceits cannot be perpetrated forever. That's Draper John William in his The Intellectual Development of Europe, page 42. So the problem I'm having here is, these two great minds, okay, great minds, denying or acting like they don't know that, and if you look at his book, you could see, this is like an image from the book. You can see the drawings, the types of stuff that they were doing. This black man, this black Muslim man, derived these theories, and he derived it from a religious perspective, saying that, now I'm not going to include man in the mix, because man is sort of separate from the mix, but... He described the this, this struggle for survival and how, you know, di different competition happens and the animals, the species competition makes them transform from one species to another with natural, you know, with the same theories of evolution and the survival of the fittest, natural selection. And he uses, you know, the Muslim holy book, Quranic quotes to back this up. Like, you know, verses that say, he, God, created the heavens and earth with, with truth and he formed you, then made good your forms, meaning, you know, kind of indicating, you know, uh, transformation of that production. And, you know, there are other, you know, but what I'm saying is he, he al Jahiz describes these things from a religious understanding that evolution of species happens. So while this view may be controversial, just like even evolution is controversial, you have the, the uh, intelligent design group, you have the pure, you know, dogmatic, uh, uh, fanatic evolution without design. Al Jahiz was the was one, or I'll say, the father of this concept centuries before Darwin, and Darwin is accused of plagiarizing him. So this is the book, and I'll invite. Neil deGrasse Tyson, and um, what's his name, Charles Dawkins, to check this book and see how, if not, nobody else came up with these theories before, um, what's his name, the racist, intro, the racist conversion and applications and modifications and promotion made by Charles Darwin. All right, I wait to see if they'll come back. I mean, I'm, I'm mini me. I'm just a little doctor over here. They are too big, but we'll see if they come back. And I challenge them to deny that Al Jahiz is the true father of the modern day story of evolution.